Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this star system right here that doesn't actually seem like anything special, but turns out it is, and turns out it's one of the strangest star systems we've discovered so far. And it's not because of this unusual cometary object you see right there, that's just the planet being evaporated because it's just way too close to the star. The strangeness of the star system comes from this recent discovery that suggests that one of the planets orbits in an extremely unusual way. It has a very strange polar orbit, something that's never been seen before in such a way, with the orbits sort of being like this. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, including potential explanations for how such a star system could be formed, and more importantly, how all of this was discovered and what this means for astronomy. But first of all, let's talk about the idea of orbits to begin with. So first of all, by studying a lot of different protoplanetary disks and a lot of early stars out there, the scientists in the last few decades have confirmed that the majority of star systems end up forming what's known as a protoplanetary disk, with the vast majority then leading to what we have in the solar system, a flattened disk with planets orbiting in a relatively similar plane of orbits. And the actual process of formation is pretty well understood. It's basically because of the conservation of angular momentum that forces a lot of things orbiting in a spherical shape to eventually flatten out and to eventually form a disk. This is something that's been simulated many different times using various computer simulations. And after this, all of these flattened disks eventually start forming coalescing shapes, which then turn into planets, with the vast majority of planets having relatively similar inclination. Now this is the case for the solar system and it's the case for a lot of other star systems discovered so far. One of the best examples is of course TRAPPIST-1 system. The seven planets of the TRAPPIST-1 are pretty much in the exactly same inclination, which is exactly why it was possible to see all of them orbiting in front of the star. This is basically how all of them were discovered. But naturally, you could still have some inclination differences here and there. And generally, the farther away from the star, the more inclination the object is going to experience, most likely due to the effects from a lot of other objects outside of the solar system. But in this case, it's still kind of difficult to imagine a star system where instead of having the same plane of orbit, at least one of the planets seems to be in a completely different polar orbit. So sort of like what you see right here, an orbit that's basically perpendicular to the rest of the star system. And turns out that this is exactly what the scientists have recently uncovered. And this is not a new star system either. It's been known to us for quite a long time. It's a star system that scientists believed looked like this, with three confirmed planets relatively close to the parent star. Now this is a K-type star, so it's actually a little bit smaller and a little bit less bright than our own sun, but in every other respect it was an extremely average looking system with three average looking planets. A somewhat hot sub-Neptune right here that seems to be evaporating and slowly stripped away of its atmosphere because of the proximity to the star. Another relatively hot sub-Neptune slightly farther away, and yet another sub-Neptune slightly farther away still. But one of these sub-Neptunes has an extreme orbit. So first of all, let's come back to the solar system for a second. Even though for the most part the planets seem to be in a relatively similar plane of orbit, there are some other objects like asteroids or things like centaurs or minor planets that do have relatively large inclination. Some of them are practically polar in their orbit. And there are at least two well-known examples, 2008 YB3 and 2004 YH32. Both of these objects have a relatively polar orbit, with one of them having approximately 80 degrees and the other one being in the opposite direction approximately 105 degrees. Which means that compared to the other objects in the solar system that have a relatively flat inclination, these two objects have a relatively high inclination. But at the same time, they also seem to have a relatively high eccentricity as well. And this does explain how they could acquire such an unusual orbit over time. This is actually related to one of the older, or actually one of the oldest videos on the channel in regards to this a slightly less known phenomenon known as the Kozai mechanism. Now that old video that should be popping up somewhere right there is actually pretty low quality, so my apologies for that, but you can also read about this mechanism in one of the articles from the Planetary Society. In a nutshell though, it refers to the idea of orbital interactions between three different bodies, 
and the body with very high eccentricity or very high inclination will actually end up exchanging them. So basically, high eccentricity becomes high inclination and eventually transforms back to high eccentricity but low inclination. It's a very unusual phenomenon, but I've simulated this using the universe sandbox back in the days. And today it's a pretty well-known phenomenon that explains a lot of high eccentricity or high inclination orbits such as various asteroids or minor planets. But this of course only explains smaller objects, so asteroids, minor planets and possibly some really really small planets. How do you explain a large planet such as, for example, a mini Neptune or an object that's basically as massive as everything else in the star system? And that's kind of the mystery of this unusual star system known as HD 3167. Three confirmed exoplanets, but one of them is in practically polar orbit. And because all three planets also have relatively similar mass, it's extremely difficult to explain. At the moment, it's practically impossible to explain. But let's actually discuss, first of all, how this was discovered, because this is also important. So as I mentioned, this system was already known to us from some of the previous studies. It's about 150 light years away from us, and the three planets here have a relatively close orbit to the parent star. The farthest planet only takes about 30 days to complete a single orbit. And that planet right in the middle, with a mass of about 7 masses of planet Earth, has an orbit of about 8.5 days. That's the planet with that strange orbit. Now these planets were discovered using the transit method, essentially as the planet moves right in front of the star it leaves a shadow behind that's visible using modern telescopes. But the thing is, the star also rotates, and as it rotates it ends up producing what's known as the redshift and the blue shift effects. Or basically the part that's moving away from us is going to appear slightly more red, the part that's moving toward us is going to appear slightly more blue. And so as the planet transits in front of the star, it's going to first end up blocking the part that's maybe redshifted and then end up blocking the part that's blue shifted, which allows the scientists to work out several things about the planetary system and the way that the planet moves around the star. Specifically, it allows the scientists to work out the direction of orbit and also work out the overall inclination of the planet. And in the past few years, the scientists behind the study have actually perfected this technique, allowing them to discover a lot more properties about each of the planetary systems. But during their study, they've discovered that HD 3167c, that middle planet that I showed you previously, seems to have a highly misaligned polar orbit that you can kind of see right here. All of this discovered because as the planet passed in front of the star, it was only blocking the redshifted part of the star which means that it never really passed anywhere here. Which really makes this an extremely unique and practically impossible to explain right now star system. Ok, it's maybe possible to explain using some really really far-fetched theories, but nothing that's sort of definitive. For example, one explanation here is that maybe there's a really really massive planet somewhere on the outskirts pulling at just that one planet for one reason or another. Or maybe this planet was just farther away or has extremely high eccentricity and because of the Ecosai mechanism it sort of shifted its plane of orbit because of that massive planet on the outskirts. But that means that it has to have an extremely high eccentricity, something that would also be very difficult to explain. On the other hand, the only other star systems we know of that have these unusual mixed orbits, including polar orbits, are usually multi-planetary systems such as this one right here known as GW Orionis. This is still a newly forming star system so the planets are not really there yet, but the way that its disk is forming right now suggests that its planets are probably going to be in somewhat misaligned inclinations. With some planets having really really high inclination, but not really polar inclination, so once again difficult to explain. And also at the same time these are multi-star systems, so it's a little bit easier to explain here because of the interaction between the stars. HD 3167, just like our sun, is the only star in the system. So unless it lost its partner that used to exist here a long time ago, once again super difficult to explain. Now there have been other star systems with unusual inclinations in their orbit, such as the Kepler 56 system that has a third planet slightly farther away with an orbit of approximately 45 degrees, but once again not as extreme and definitely not polar. So trying to explain this at the moment is not really possible. Which means that we're probably going to be coming back and talking about the star system once certain explanations are provided or once someone finds something else about it explaining what we see. And so at the moment HD 3167 just went from being a somewhat average three planet system to one of the strangest we've discovered. 
But I guess for now, that's pretty much it. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.